Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Crumble Takes. And on today's video, like I did a week ago, how I graded all the AFC teams, now I'm going to be grading all the NFC teams or all your teams with people who got an NFC team out there. I'm going to be grading all of those now. Yes. Some of them were easy to grade, like I said in the last one. Some of them were easy to grade, some of them were hard to grade. Now, uh, I'm going to grade these off of performance and how most people thought they were going to do at the start of the year and just how they did overall. If they had high expectations and they fell short, then they got a bad grade. Uh, please follow my Twitter at CrumbleTake. Follow my TikTok at CrumbleTake732. And let's get into it, starting with the NFC North. Bears 3 and 14 missed playoffs. Now, I don't think a lot of people expected the Bears to be something this year, me included, seeing they only won three games. Um, well, the Chicago Bears season was pretty bad, I would say. They sold a lot of them contracts that they had from back when they were a little bit good in the 2018 season. They sold a lot of them big contracts and traded. Rokon Smith was traded to the Ravens. Uh, Robert Quinn was also traded. They just try to get rid of all them big contracts, and now they have a crap ton of cap space. But pretty much the Chicago Bears season was just trash. The defense wasn't worth anything. But one thing emerged from this season that literally saved them: Justin freaking Fields, man. He was a baller in fantasy. And he balled out in real life. He broke the single game rushing record versus the game in Miami, and he's looking like he might be a top quarterback eventually if they can just get some pizzas around him with this cap space. Otherwise. Fields might fail, but I think this is re really cool. He had a ton of runs, man. Fields was a super good quarterback this year, in my opinion. But the Bears at all of the season, these three wins, it just showed that they need a lot, lot more pieces to help them become a contending team. But the one good thing that came out of this is Justin Fields. Grade D minus. Packers eight and nine miss playoffs. They started 1-3. They honestly tried. And then it just went all downhill after they started 1-3. And, and then they came back uphill. They almost made it back to the playoffs. I was like, oh my gosh. Packers might have one of the greatest comeback seasons ever. And then you know what happens? You want to know what happens? They choke in a Week 18 game to the Lions. I was like, oh my god. The Packers are going to Packer and keep choking. Now, Aaron Rodgers had a not that well of a season this year compared to his other two seasons but that's probably because Devontae Adams left so Packers aren't really as good as they have been but you know they were, they were I would say they were kind of decent I mean they were also kind of trash though at the same spot at the same time though it's just they had that really bad stretch where they're losing games and they were coming up I think they need to let Aaron Rodgers go and have this be Jordan Love time Christian Watson was also a huge revelation for them after dropping that pass he came back and now it looks like he's going to be a decent wide receiver for the near future which uh in my opinion I think is really cool um but like I said, I think they need to get Jordan Love the keys. They used the first round draft pick on him. Either Rodgers, they got to trade him or he got to retire. Like, it's time to start something new. I'm sorry. Like, that big old contract that y'all gave him, he basically hold the organization hostage. But, you know, like I said, C. Lions 9-7 and seven, missed playoffs. The fact that they missed playoffs makes me so mad because I predicted at the beginning of the year that they were going to make playoffs and they were so, 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 so close. Now, they started off 1-6. and six. It was looking pretty bad. It was looking like Dan Campbell might lose his job, but they ended off 9-8. and eight. Like, I think I said 9-7 and seven earlier, but that, uh, they ended off 9-8. and eight. Now, with this, they were pretty much a game and a half from the playoffs. If they would have beat that shootout game they had with seattle 48 to 45 they would have made playoffs and they would have played the 49ers so otherwise though their season it was pretty good i would say if we were grading off first half it'd be pretty bad but second half man they came back man and they just dominated the lions offense was amazing i would pretty say at times with the players that they have golf st brown jamal williams swift when he was healthy and the defense is up and coming akuda had a decent year aiden hutchinson looks like he probably should have went number one overall to the jaguars but they got a decent team and i think that there's a chance they have a chance at the north next year i'm not gonna lie i think they can easily get the north if they just play well and they have there's like the sixth pick in the draft this year from the rams so that's just gonna help them even more with the defense so grade a minus Vikings 13 and 4 L in the wild card. 
the biggest frauds ever was these Minnesota Vikings. They were so much frauds. They go into the playoffs with a negative point differential. They are barely winning games. They barely won these games. In the game that they lost to Philly, Dallas, Detroit, there's games that they lost and they were pretty much blowouts. Just absolute blowouts. Now, you could be like, oh, they had the greatest comeback this year. You shouldn't be down 33-0 to zero to the freaking Indianapolis Colts who were tanking for CJ Stroud. You shouldn't be down that many. Yeah, they came back, but let's be honest, it's the Colts. Like, you were, like, they're garbage. Like, all right. But now, back to what I was saying. Justin Jefferson, he's amazing. Kirk Cousins, he had a decent season. Dalvin Cook, he's all right. But, like... I'm thinking about the for the future of this Minnesota team, they're going to have to replace Kirk Cousins eventually. He's like 34 now. Yeah, he's pretty old. But like I'm saying, man, the Vikings, they, they were just the biggest frauds ever. That defense is, was horrendous. It was trash. I can't even lie. They literally got in this close games, and then as soon as they went into the wild card round, they got exposed by the Giants. Exposed pretty, it was, it was pretty much, the whole game was pretty much in the Giants' control. They got exposed, and they lost, and that's why they did not make it to the divisional round. It was pretty sad, pretty sad ending for this Vikings team who won the division and won 13 freaking games. Grade is going to be a B because they did end up winning 13 games, and I didn't have the a lot of expectation for them. Commanders 8-8-1. Eight, eight, and one. I'm not going to lie, this Commanders team really started off good this year. I thought they were going to make playoffs. They were in the playoff picture. They were in the sixth seed brood. Um, Carson Wentz was their quarterback at the beginning of the year. He ended up getting hurt, and Taylor Heineke came in. They, he, he beat the undefeated Eagles. It was looking nice for the Commanders. I'm not going to lie. I was like, okay, Heineke's in here. They're winning games. Heineke, is I wouldn't say he's the greatest quarterback in the world, but he's a great game manager for the situation that they had with Wentz being hurt. Um, but then after they lost that game to the Giants on that Sunday night football game, it just started falling apart for them um Heineke ended up getting benched in a game versus San Francisco where the Washington Commanders kind of get blown I mean it's the number one defense in the league though like how are you gonna bench him in my opinion I don't believe Heineke should have been benched but then Wentz went in there and he just started being Carson Wentz in hot garbage not good whatsoever I personally believe Heineke should have still been the quarterback I don't think one should have got benched but they ended up going 8-8-1 eight, eight, and one. they were very close to making the playoffs but then at the in the end they got eliminated so honestly I mean in the future man they, if they got Sam Howe, he looked decent in the last game they played. If they can just feed, make him feed the ball to Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson, they should be good. Grade C+. Plus. Giants 9-7-1. L in the divisional round. Y'all might not believe me on this one, but... I have said for the past two seasons in the offseason, start of the season, I'm like, the Giants are a sneaky team, man. They might make playoffs and make wild card. They disappointed me in 2020 when they could have made won the division. They disappointed me last year where they just didn't really play that good. The one year I am not high in them making the playoffs, they freaking do it and make the playoffs. I was like, oh my gosh, the one year. But back to this New York Giants season. Uh, they hired Brian Dable in the offseason. One of the best coach hirings I've seen out of this year. Mr. Daniel, he turned Daniel Jones from a turnover machine to a game manager. And he actually played decent. He had a good, decent amount of games. He played decent. He played well, I will not lie. But $40 million in the contract? No, he does not deserve no $40 million. If I wake up and I see $40 million, I'm going to laugh because they overpaid him. Uh, Saquon Barkley, he is, he is back. He is back. That's like he's back. He played well. He had over a thousand yards. He played really well this year. Um, Isaiah Hodgins was also a revolution for them. I, they got signed. He's also a great wide receiver. They're bringing him back. They cut Kenny Galladay. Overall, the Giants' season. I mean, they went nine and seven. Pretty good. They went nine seven and one actually. Um, it was actually pretty good for the Giants. I'm not gonna lie. They played decent. They had some good wins. They had some bad losses, but. They made it, they beat the Fraud Vikings in the divisional round, like I said was going to happen, that was my prediction, and what they did was, you know, they got blown off by the Eagles in the divisional round, but they, let's be honest, the Eagles are just the better team, what do we expect? Grade A-, minus. Cowboys 12-5 and five, L in the divisional round. So I could sit here and rant about the Cowboys for a good hour, but I'm not going to do it. So basically, the Cowboys season was actually, I would say, it was pretty decent. 
keyword season regular season uh they did go um they did go 12 and 5 second in their division because philly's in their division um we actually played decent throughout the most year besides some games like that end of the washington game at the end of the year it was actually pretty bad and it started getting me worried um but overall a decent season from the cowboys regular season um Dak was hurt some of this season. Uh, they put what you call in there. Cooper Rush was like five and one. He was able to game manage it. Tony Pollard was a huge revelation for them. He came out, made the Pro Bowl. I'm pretty certain, and also C.D. Lamb, two huge, huge offensive pieces that came out. Zeke was injured, but he came back a little bit. He like got a whole bunch of touchdowns for like, like from like ten yards in. So basically. A lot is, and then they play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in a wild card round. They just dominate them, and then they go to the divisional round, and this is where stuff starts getting questioned. They lose to the 49ers, and the last play of the game is very questionable, very very questionable. And that's how the game ends, and that's how the Cowboys season ends. Now, I think they're gonna have to keep Dak. Some people are like, "They should just trade Dak, get rid of Dak." I'm like, "Dude, you can't get rid of Dak and get who." That's my thing. It's like, who are you gonna replace Dak with? You have no I You have no one to replace him with, unless I don't know. They go trade a whole bunch of crap, but I doubt that. I think that they should probably go trade for Jalen Ramsey too, because they have a huge corner problem. And Micah Parsons next year is gonna be Micah Parsons. Grade B. Eagles 14 and three lost in the Super Bowl. I personally thought they was gonna do it. They was gonna win the chip. They was gonna walk away. I thought they were gonna be champions, but they weren't. The Chiefs had something else different. This Eagles season was was one of the best for them. I would say they started off eight and zero. They were just crushing. They crushed Minnesota. Like they were just they were just doing well. They were being like some iffy in a few games. It was like all right, this, this is closer than it should be. But they really crushed their season overall. Jalen Hurts was second in MVP voting. Like he he was just a monster. AJ Brown that trade helped them a ton. Devontae Smith and AJ Brown both all have over a thousand receiving yards. Miles Sanders was also really, really good this year. Eagles O line, best in the league. Eagles defense, one of the best in the league. That's secondary with Bradbury, uh, Slay, and Chauncey Gar uh, Gardner. Uh, it was pretty. I think it was a pretty good of a season for the Eagles. Um, they beat, they won the divisional round. They blew out San Fran in the NFC Championship, but you know some people think because of the quarterback situation it wasn't. Um, but yeah. Um, like what I was saying. Overall, I think it was a good season for the Eagles. They just came up just short in the Super Bowl. It was just a little turnover that just messed everything up. But, yeah. Otherwise, I think this had a really good season. I think they'll be back. Grade A+. Plus. Falcons 7-10 and 10 missed playoffs. So what did I find out this Falcons season? Well, they ran the ball the most in the NFL. They really like running the ball. And also, I found out... Marcus Mariota is not a good quarterback. Oh my god, the waste of Kyle Pitt's season this year was crazy. Some of them throws I watched Mariota throw to Pitts were so bad. I'm like, no wonder Pitts isn't doing anything in fantasy. Eventually, Mariona did get benched or injured, I think as they said. But he did get benched for Ritter. And I think Ritter actually played decent. He actually had some good games them last few games like that last week game he actually he actually played pretty decent i'm not gonna lie and i think he should be this quarterback next year and they should develop him uh drake london is looking like a good piece so drake london and tyra algier and kyle pitts are all gonna be good pieces personally if i was the falcons i would probably take something defense wise in the draft because that defense is gonna feel gonna need some help and some upgrades but otherwise that it was kind of a mid-season for the falcons grade c Saints 7 and 10 missed the playoffs. I honestly don't even know how the Saints went 7 and 10. I thought it would have been way worse in my opinion, but I guess not. So the Saints had Jameis Winston at the start of the season, then he got hurt, and then Andy Dalton became the quarterback for the rest of the season. My, In my opinion, I thought when Jameis came back and he was healthy, they should have gave the keys back to Jameis and not gave it back to Dalton. I mean, not let Dalton keep it, because in my opinion, Andy Dalton was very, very mid this year. I mean, look, he threw four touchdowns in a game, but in that game, he also threw two pick sixes. Alvin Kamara pretty much regressed this year. Chris Olave looks like he's going to be a decent wide receiver. Johan Johnson was a nice tight end for them. But otherwise, the Saints team, it was it was pretty mid. Like, there was nothing truly special. 
with the team besides pretty much Chris Olave. I mean, Taysom Hill was Taysom Hill playing every position. They used him way more. But the only good thing I really see out of this team right now is Olave. They are in desperate need of a quarterback, and they don't have a pick this year because they traded to, to Philly for to drive Chris Olave. So it sounds like they're going to be doing some research. They might have to go, go ahead and sign Derek Carr. But yeah, they are definitely in need of a quarterback because Andy Dalton's not going to be able to be the quarterback unless they want to give the keys back to Winston, which I wouldn't mind them doing because I think Winston, he's a solid guy, man. I feel like some people be sleeping on him, but still, Saints season very mid. Grade C. Carolina Panthers 7-10 miss playoffs. So the Panthers started off with Baker Mayfield and he suddenly got benched, cut, released. I don't remember. I think yeah, I think he got released because he was he was pretty bad in the games he played there. Um, then they went to P.J. Walker. He played decent, but he ended up suffering a high ankle sprain. So then they went back to Sam Darnold. He actually played, I would think, decent in my opinion. But still, I think the Panthers are gonna need a quarterback of the future. This season was very also like like I said, it was mid for them too. They had a chance to win the division. But they completely blew it against Tampa Bay. They let Tom Brady throw three TD passes to Mike Evans. And it was just, they were just cooked from there. They had no hope after that. But they had a little bit of a chance. DJ Moore, he had a decent season, I would say. They traded Christian McCaffrey. That was pretty much kind of expected at this point. But Foreman might be a good back the way he looked. But definitely, this team would definitely needs a quarterback and some more offensive weapons. I think the defense is, it's going to be decent. I mean... They drafted that all defensive class this year, so in my opinion, they need to draft a quarterback. If they don't want to bring Darnold back, they need to do some quarterback-wise, because Darnold, I don't know if he's going to be the answer for that long. Grade C, Tampa Bay Buccaneers 8-9, and nine, lost in the wild card round. I'm not going to lie, I thought Tampa was going to out here and kill it again, and it was just all bad from the start. So Tom Brady retired, Tom Brady then unretired and came back for another year but here's the thing about this tampa team it was different than that tampa team last year the whole old line was pretty much different the old line was either changed or the players that were on there were hurt so the old line was worse uh antonio brown of course he's not there so they got a julio uh, a old julio jones mike evans was a shell of himself you could tell with brady there uh godwin still produced well fournette was still a little bit he's getting up there in age now this team which is old and it wasn't it just wasn't gonna do anything they went eight and nine they had a losing record and won the division just because the nfc south is so bad but they got obliterated in the wild card round i personally thought hey man brady's never lost against the cowboys they, Cause I'm gonna be honest, I'm one of the people who love Tom Brady. Think he's a goat, but hey, man, it it was all it was an end from there after that wild card round. So now Tom Brady's officially retired. This Tampa Bay Buccaneers team, they they might as well tank for Caleb Williams next year. That's all I gotta say about them. Cause the state of this franchise is gonna be in shambles now. Cause they ain't got no quarterback. I would just trade some pieces and just take for Caleb at this point. That's the only thing you really can do grade d plus and the reason why i give them such a low grade even though they won the division is because they had expectations and they did not meet them i mean they made playoffs but like i said lost in a wild card round losing record come on now cardinals 4 and 13 missed playoffs the cardinals season it was bad it, it was really bad they won four games lost 13 um one monday night in new england kyler murray I don't know if the game was no, it was in Arizona. My bad. Kyler Murray tore his ACL. That is really, really bad for them. They were bad even before Kyler tore his ACL. I think Kyler missed some games with a hamstring issue too. Deion, it sounds like DeAndre Hopkins is going to be traded. Cardinals, I don't even know where they should start. They got the third. They got like the fourth pick in the draft. They need to, they need to draft some defense. Because I'm not going to lie, that defense is trash. They got Hollywood Brown. He played decent. Uh, James Conner was pretty good too. But like I said, they need to they need to just add some more pieces on that defense. Because that defense, I'm not going to lie, is horrid. Probably add some stuff to the O-line. They just they just got to get a little bit better. Because I'm going to be honest, they're, they're, they're struggling. They're, they're going to struggle. With Kyler out, especially with these next few games at the start of the season next year, it's not going to be looking good for them. They're probably going to have to take some years to rebuild. And if they don't like it, Kyler might end up wanting to get traded. And Jonathan Gannon's now their head coach. I don't think that's going to work well. A lot of people don't like Jonathan Gannon, including me being a head coach. But we will see. But like I said, their season was pretty much, it was garbage. Grade D minus. Ams 5-12 missed playoffs. 
Rams fell off so hard, it's crazy how bad they fell off. So, first off, our whole team was pretty much injured. Stafford got injured, Cooper Cub got injured, pretty much everyone you could think of on the team pretty much got injured. The O-line was another huge problem for them. It was pretty much garbage. Uh, they had Baker Mayfield play quarterback for a little bit. He was kind of cool playing quarterback, I'm not going to lie. But this Rams team was not the same team won the Super Bowl. Odell Beckham, you know, he tore his ACL. He's not there anymore. The team just wasn't the same, and they fell off hard, and they just sucked. They just weren't the same team. It just was hard for them to win games, and people were just better than them, mostly because of that O-line. Like I said, it was so so brutal to them like nick bosley he had like uh like i think it was a i don't even remember but the 49ers one day on that monday night game just it was a field day for their defense sacking them over and over again i think what they got to do is they got to evaluate quarterback see see if stafford can still play because he has a back injury and that can be very dangerous i think they got to evaluate that bring cut back trade ramsey and try to run it back the best you can and then you got to beef up that o-line a little bit because it's trash because they got no picks they got no picks so they can't just go out and draft people like that they traded all they picks for that super bowl which i can't blame them but like i said this season was pretty much it was pretty much a failure it was pretty much a failure not good for them grade d minus Seahawks 9 and 8 lost in the wild card round. Now I will admit this Seahawks season was insane. I projected them to be one of the worst teams in the league. A lot of people did. But Geno Smith showed insane. He let the NFL in accuracy percentage. This man, he just killed it. Geno was out there balling. Comeback player of the year, Geno. Uh Kenneth Walker who drafted was a huge revelation for them too. It was overall a decent season for Seattle. I think they should add some more pieces on defense though, because that run defense was horrid horrible oh my gosh it was so bad that run defense but so they definitely need to add some pieces on that run defense otherwise Gino man he was balling he, he showed why he didn't write back like him lock it lock it and metcalf had two good years walker was going off he had a thousand years. it was just it was a pretty good season for the seahawks they made playoffs as a seven seed barely squeaked in there a little bit um they get, get, get they did keep it competitive in the first half for the 49ers, but then they got second half they got blown out. It's it just hey man, what can, what can you really do about it? But I think Seahawks they need to try to probably try to re-sign Geno if they really want to draft somebody because they stole Denver's pick. You got to remember that if they really do want to draft somebody, I'd have them sit behind Geno. I'd bring Geno back and just have them sit behind Geno and just see what y'all can brew there. Because like I said, Geno has his great season, but he's is up there in age. He ain't gonna be able to be there for like a, he's not their franchise piece for 10 years. But overall. Good season from Seattle. Grade B. 49ers 13 and 4 lost in the NFC Championship game. I don't even know what to say about this 49er team. They played quarterback carousel. Trey Lance, he got hurt. And when they moved to Jimmy G, Jimmy G got hurt. Then we put Mr. Irrelevant in here. And this man just starts balling out with Christian McCaffrey, who they traded for, and Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk with the best defense in the league. Oh my gosh, this 49 team was something special. They did get blown on the NFC Championship by Philly, but Brock did not play the whole game. That is another thing. And when Brock did go back in, he played like trash because he was hurt. Very insane season for the 49ers. Very up and down. Oh my gosh, it was it was pretty cool seeing what Brock Purdy could do, being Mr. Irrelevant and actually coming out here and balling. But they did get lost in the NFC Championship, like I said. I think their future... Whoever they start, Trey or Purdy, I will let Jimmy G go. I think whoever starts, Trey or Purdy, I think either one of them is going to have success in this. I think both of them could have success in this offense because this offense is just so good with McCaffrey, Debo, Ayuk. They got so many weapons, so many weapons that it's just whoever's in this offense, in my opinion, really can just ball out. And they got the best defense in the league. I mean, yeah, overall, great season for the 49ers. Grade A. Thank you guys for watching. So follow my Twitter at Crumble Takes, follow my TikTok at Crumble Takes 732, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Have a nice day, and watch these two videos.